Hey makeup friends, we have made it through another month, which means it's time for monthly favorites. Let's do this. As always, I wanna start off by welcoming you back to my channel, or if you are new here, then hello and welcome. My name is Kara, and on my channel, we like to mix beauty, brains, and the occasional F-bomb. Really quickly, the makeup. My eyeshadow today is from the Hindash Beautopsy palette, and I do have it topped with a loose pigment here in the shade Bonita from Lorena Makeup. Brand new to me, but I'm really loving the sparkle. On my lips is one of the lipsticks from Pat McGrath, and this is in the shade Beauty Junkie. All right. Let's just dive straight into this. I have been testing out a lot of new makeup products lately, but I have been doing it in a way that keeps my makeup rather minimal. So I don't have a ton of products to talk about, and we are going to include one hair product as well as one skincare product, which is unusual for me on my channel. I typically don't talk a lot about hair care or skincare, but this month we do have two products to talk about. So why don't we address those first? So first up, and this may sound a little self-serving because this was sent to me by the brand, however, it really has knocked my socks off. And it's this here from Irresistible Me. So I've talked about Irresistible Me in the past. They've provided me with two different sets of hair extensions, both of which I absolutely love. And they reached out to me and offered to send me one of their hair straighteners. So this is the Diamond Professional Styler. I'm just gonna dig it out of the box here. It's got a nice long cord to it, the base of which completely swivels all the way around, and this is what it looks like. One of the things that I really, really enjoy about this hair straightener, first of all, it's fantastic and actually manages to straighten my hair. Of course, I didn't go to the effort today, which would have made an awful lot of sense when talking about a straightener, but take my word for it, it's amazing, but it also heats up blazing fast. So there's just little heat dials on the inside here. You just turn it on, set it to the temperature that you want. It maxes out at about 450, I believe, and it heats up in, I would say about 20 seconds, maybe 30 at the absolute most, and I love that. And because it has this little set of lines here, it shows you the progress, so you don't have to guess as to when it's finished, it actually lets you know. And then it also has the temperature display on this little window here. Another thing that I really like about it is that it doesn't seem to pull my hair out. The straightener that I had previous to this, I would use it, but a lot of my hair would end up like on the floor and in the sink, and I don't know if it was like burning the hair and breaking it off, or if it was just the plates were sticky and it was pulling hair out. I really can't say. Regardless, when I use this, there's a few hairs on the floor afterwards, but really minimal. Sorry, I've also just noticed this in holding it up. There's like a little grooved part here and on the other side as well. So when I'm bringing it through my hair, I have a spot there that I can hold on to it and it doesn't heat up, so my fingers are nice and safe from it. So I'm just taking a look at the information package that was included with the straightener and there's some really interesting information in here and stuff that shows just how intuitive and user-friendly this product is. So it has an intelligent temperature conversion, so the iron will automatically change the temperature display mode into Celsius or Fahrenheit depending on the supplied voltage. It has a dynamic alignment system, which is an advanced design feature that self-adjusts the plate pair to provide perfect contact between your hair and the plates, eliminating any damaging pressure points so that your iron can work through the hair smoothly without pulling. I suspect very strongly that that's what my old straightener was missing because it pulled the hair out, like I said, to a, like, a disturbing degree, and it also left my hair really frizzy afterwards, which this one does not. The plates also have tourmaline in them rather than just ceramic, and it says in here that the tourmaline generates up to six, six times more negative ions upon heating than traditional ceramic ions. I am far from a hair expert, but I imagine that plays into the frizz-free aspect of it. I could be completely wrong, but I suspect that that's what that is. At any rate, I've been very impressed with this. It does work very well on my hair, and as you can see, I have incredibly curly hair to begin with, 
and my old straightener was not up to the task. It just could not do a good job and this one does. So at any rate, I did wanna share this product with you because I really have been enjoying it and I know it's something that I'm going to get a lot of use out of going forward. So then that's gonna bring us to the skincare item and it's from a brand called Innisfree. And this is their Intensive Hydrating Eye Roll-On with Green Tea Seed. And I'll show you the applicator because I think it's really neat. So that is what it looks like. And you just press down and it brings out a little bit of the product there. And then what I do with this is in the morning when I'm sitting down to do my makeup, I then just apply it underneath my eyes the metal tip on this here is very cooling, so if I have any puffiness under my eyes, it's just really refreshing under there and helps to combat that a little bit. But overall, it's just a nice sort of wake me up in the morning. So I keep it down here in my makeup room. I don't really view it as part of my skincare routine per se, but it is becoming part of my makeup routine. I like it because it, it adds hydration under my eyes, which let's be honest, they are getting close to being 41 year old under eyes and they'll take all the hydration they can get under there, but it's also just a nice relaxing part of my morning. It sinks in really nicely and it has a very nice like fresh kind of scent to it. So overall, I've just been really enjoying the experience of this product. All right, so then we're gonna talk about some makeup products. One of them I'm just gonna mention very briefly because I have talked this thing to death on my channel lately and that's gonna be the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. I love it. My resolve about not buying a full size until I've used up some other mascaras is very quickly crumbling because this one is very quickly drying out and emptying because I can't stop using it. It's so good. I have talked about this so many times, but if you are new here and have not seen any of my other videos, Suffice it to say, it's just a fantastic mascara. The wand is like this big bristly round thing. There's nothing gimmicky about it. It doesn't clump my lashes. It volumizes, it separates, it lifts them, it lengthens. It's just like chef's kiss perfection. I love this mascara so much. And I am very tempted to buy the full size, like very tempted. Another product that has been in heavy rotation lately is the eyeshadow stick here from Vive. This is called the Eye Wand and it's in the shade Hazelnut. It's just a retractable eyeshadow stick. It's nothing fancy. Even the shade isn't really all that fancy. Like, it's just a really nice warm brown, but I love it smudged out all over the lid. I can do it as a one and done. What else I've been doing is sort of patting a more shimmery single shadow over the center of the lid after I buffed this out all over and that's my eyeshadow done. It just makes me feel put together and polished without taking up a ton of time or frankly, a ton of thought either. So this is one that I have been absolutely loving. It lasts all day. It's not super drying on the lids. It doesn't dry down so quickly that it's a pain in the ass to work with, but once it sets into place, it doesn't move around. It doesn't crease or anything of that sort. I'm just, I'm so impressed with this one and I'm thinking about getting the lightest shade to use as an eyeshadow base because I love it so much. Now I have two blushes that I keep reaching for over and over again and one of them is from Melt. It's one of their new cream blush lights and this one in particular is in the shade Honey Thief and it's just this beautiful almost burnt apricot kind of color. Aside from loving the shade of this one I also just really like the texture of these blushes. They are just so emollient. They blend out so nicely, and yet that color does last on my cheeks all day. There's nothing sticky about them. These ones, or at least this finish, doesn't have any glittery particles in it and no real sheen to it, but it's just, it adds like that nice, like sun-kissed kind of glow to my cheeks, just the color of it, and just, I'm so in love with it. I have said in previous videos that I had Honey Thief in the powder formula and I just, I didn't like it. I thought that the powder was too powdery. It just kicked up so much in the pan and I just didn't like using it. Whereas this one blends out so nicely. And the pigmentation, while it is well pigmented, it's not so overwhelming that I have a difficult time adjusting how much I use. It just blends away effortlessly. So this is one that I can tap into the pan with my brush, but how I prefer to do it is just pick up some on my finger, 
place it on my cheeks and then blend it out that way using a brush. I can blend it out with my fingers, it's not too stubborn to do that, but I prefer using the brush to do it. I just think it gives it a very nice diffused look once it's blended out. Another blush that I have been reaching for over and over again is a powder blush and it's from e.l.f. This is one of their little bite-sized face duos. This one is in the shade White Peach. And can you tell that I really love peachy blushes? There's just something about them. This one is so, so nice. And I think, honestly, I think I paid like $4 for this duo or something. Like it's just, you wouldn't expect it to, to be good. You really wouldn't based on the price alone. And yet, it's a gorgeous blush. Like it has excellent pigmentation and yet again, it blends out really nicely. And this powder isn't as powdery as the Melt powder was. The highlighter in here is nice as well, although it's not my favorite. This one is a little bit more powdery and it is a little bit deep for my skin tone at this time of year. But again, it does blend out really nicely. There's no glittery particles in there and you can use it almost Honestly, when I'm looking at it in the viewfinder there, it kind of reminds me of Citrine from Jouer, which is a longtime favorite of mine. And honestly, if I had to pick one highlighter as my favorite, it would be Citrine. I'm just gonna do a quick little comparison. So Citrine is a little bit lighter. I'll show you in just one second. While the e.l.f. one is more peachy in tone, Citrine is a little bit more on the golden side. So there is a bit of a difference, but more specifically, I'm looking at the finish of it and how it blends onto the skin. So while the e.l.f. one is a bit powdery in the pan and certainly more powdery than the Jouer one, you can see that it just like glides onto the skin so beautifully. And that's one of the things I really love about Citrine is that it just, it looks like it's part of my skin. It doesn't look like I've applied something on top. It just looks like I'm lit from within. And honestly, in looking at my hand, Citrine takes the cake. It is a little bit more smooth than the e.l.f., but the e.l.f. isn't far off. It really isn't, and there's about a $30 difference between the duo and the single of Citrine. I don't think you'd be disappointed with the duo, to be honest. I really don't. I'd like to get my hands on a few other shades in those duos. It's just right now, everything's locked down. It's a whole thing. It's a pain in the ass, but at any rate... At some point, I will likely pick up more shades because I'm really impressed by these powders. So now let's address these little swatches here. They are lip pencils from Gerard Cosmetics. And overall, I love the formula of the Gerard Cosmetics pencils, but these are the shades that I find I reach for more often than any other shades that I have. And in the past, I haven't been much of a lip pencil kind of person. I just really haven't seen the need to use them or the value, frankly, of them. And my style has changed and my preferences have changed. And now I am reaching for lip pencils more and more. Frankly, what I give credit to is putting a lip pencil into my project pan. I think that's where it came from because I started using it on a daily basis. And I started to realize like how you can manipulate the lipstick on top by using the lip pencil. And obviously I knew that that was a thing, but for whatever reason, I just never bothered going down that road. And now that I have, I really love it. At any rate, if I reach for a lip pencil, more often than not, it's these ones. So like I said, it was these shades in particular that I've been reaching for. So from top to bottom, the first one is the shade Share, followed by Sugar and Spice. Nude is next. And then the one on the bottom is Peachy Keen. In terms of the actual application, these are just like pencil lip liners, and then you do sharpen them, so they're not retractable, but they're incredibly creamy without being slippery. And I do find that sometimes pencil lip liners just aren't great, like they're too dry, they drag across the lips, the tips break off, they're just kind of a hot mess and they can be really inconsistent. However, I have a ton of these lip pencils and they are all equally good. I've never had any issues with them, so the consistency is there, but they're also just really smooth. They don't tug on the skin at all, and yet once they're applied onto the lips, they do last a very long time. Now, not to the point where as your lipstick wears away, you have just this like never dying ring of color around your lips. They're not frustrating in that sense, but they don't like slip and slide across the lips, like I said, and I just, I really enjoy these. So to my point, I'm trying to wipe this away with just a wipe here. 
and you can see that they are stubborn. They will wipe off eventually, but they're great as lip pencils is I guess the point I'm trying to make. All right, my last makeup favorite for this month is a new foundation and it is the Makeup Forever Water Tone Foundation. The shade that I have is Y245, which when I first apply it, it looks far too light despite the fact that historically that has been the shade that has worked best for me from Makeup Forever. But once it's blended out, I think because it's such a thin consistency, it doesn't look too light on the skin. It just blends in really nicely. It doesn't necessarily change my skin color all that much. It just kind of enhances my actual skin. That looks atrocious, I know. It's way too much for the back of my hand. But I have talked about this in another video. I did apply it in a recent video. Which video was it? It was a get ready with me where I was using new products. And oh, I love the scent of it. I really do. It, it's strong enough that it's noticeable, so if you don't like scented products, I don't know that you're gonna like this, but I find it light enough that it's just, it's just an added perk for me. It's a bit of a floral scent, reminds me of YSL products, but not nearly to the degree that YSL uses. I think my favorite thing about this foundation is just how lightweight it is. I can wear it for 12, 14 hours during the day and I'm still not aware of it on my skin. It never gets heavy. I never feel like my skin isn't breathing. It's just such a nice lightweight product and yet it does help to enhance my skin and just sort of even things out a little bit while not covering up every little speck on my face. My freckles show through, all of that kind of thing, but it just kind of does like a soft blurring effect on the skin and I really, really like that. All right, but sadly, not everything can be roses and I do have three products that I just did not really enjoy. One of them I did talk about in a recent video where I did a whole bunch of reviews and it's this product here from e.l.f. This is the Ride or Die Lip Balm in the shade Cheeky Cherry. The color is nice, the texture is okay, but it's just, it's the scent and the taste of it that I just cannot get past. It, it tastes like soap. Like it smells like literal detergent. It's, it's brutal. And then once you have it on your lips, all you taste is soap. And like, I don't, I don't enjoy that. <laughs> I really don't. I'm not going to be on an episode of like My Strange Addiction because I eat soap. Like I'm just not. That's what it looks like. It's a bit of a thicker consistency and certainly like the application of it is a little... I don't know, sus, is that what the kids are saying these days? Because there's no actual applicator. Like it's just a tube, you squeeze it out, you drag it off, and then you apply it. Which becomes a little messy with a shade this dark, but at any rate, it, that's not the issue for me. I can honestly get past that. It's just the taste. I cannot with the taste. Another lip product that I just am not wild on is this one here from NARS. This is the Air Matte Lip Color in the shade All Yours. I like the idea of it, I don't like the execution. So this one does have an applicator, it's got a nice little doe foot, but I, don't, I just don't like this product. It's like a moussey liquid lipstick kind of deal, but it just, it looks fine on my hand because I've just spent the time to like even it out. But when you put it on the lips, it's just very splotchy. It just does not apply evenly, it slips and slides around, especially if there's any moisture on your lips whatsoever, like particularly on the inner portion, it's just like, nope, don't want any part of that. So then it camps around at the front and there's this clear line of demarcation. It's just, it's a hot mess. I'm just not a fan. I like the color. I don't like how it wears. It's just a product that's tying up space right now, frankly. I don't even know why I'm keeping it in the drawer, I guess because I spent money on it and I, I feel like I should keep it, but I just don't like it. All right, so now we're gonna end on a perfume. And if you watched my recent Get Ready With Me, you can probably guess what I'm going to talk about. It's Coconut Fizz from Guerlain. Now, in that video, Aspen gave her two cents on what this smelled like, and I believe her exact word was, it smells like garbage? I wouldn't go that far. I don't think it's terrible, but it's definitely not coconut. What the hell, it kind of smells like you know what it smells like? It smells like when you're walking in a field in the summer and there's a bunch of wildflowers. That's what it smells like. 
But like, there's not a hint of coconut to be found in there. Not even a little. But it, it does smell like, it smells like the wildflowers that my son picks for me. <laughs> He's so sweet. That's what it smells like. It's growing on me. It is. Obviously, I haven't returned it and I haven't exchanged it. Um, Barry seems to like it, to be honest. And because he likes it, I want to like it. So I am giving it a little bit more time. I do find with perfumes that my appreciation or lack thereof can change fairly quickly. For example, I had Flower Bomb. I got the sample of it. I used to sniff it every time I went into the store. I freaking loved it. So I bought, I think I just bought like a roller ball or a small atomizer. Thank goodness. I only bought the small one because after like a week of wearing it, it literally made me like involuntarily shudder every time I smelled it. There was just something, it didn't sit right on my skin or just, I don't know what it was, but it became like cloyingly sweet. And it was one of those scents that like grabbed me at the back of my throat and I could practically taste it. So I'm kind of hoping that the opposite will happen here and I'll just grow to love it. Now that I think I've kind of nailed down a scent for it, which frankly, I could be completely wrong and it could have nothing to do with flowers, but that's how I interpret it. That makes me happy. Now there's a happy association and that might be enough. It's like, you know, when you have like a coworker or something and they're really, really nice and that makes them pretty. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Or like there's somebody who is objectively handsome, but he's an asshole. So you're like, yeah, he's not handsome anymore. He's, he's, he's a dog. You know what I mean? Like it just, perception is everything. So I'm going to keep it for now, but it's definitely an on the fence kind of product at this point. All right. I know I'm just about to wrap this video up, but can I add one more completely random favorite if only because it just caught my eye? Of course I can. It's my video. All right. This is completely random, but it's a pen. It's a pen. Um, I don't know that I've ever disclosed this, but I'm a giant nerd. I like... <laughs> whenever we get like the catalogs at work that have all the office supplies in them that's like my Victoria's Secrets catalog like I love looking at office supplies I don't know man I have a weird addiction when it comes to pens notepads all that kind of stuff I just I'm a giant nerd at heart at any rate I saw this pen on Zulily and had to have it it's from the brand Uli I don't know, O-O-L-Y. There it is. I'd never heard of them before, but the pen was like $10, so I thought, why the hell not? And look at this. It's so cool. It's one of those like actual nib point pens. And it comes like, there's obviously one in there right now, but it came with a few of these little backup cartridges of ink as well, and like they're actual like liquid ink. I feel so fancy using it and it writes really nicely. They had a few different colors, but obviously I went for the blue. And there, it just writes really nicely. It doesn't smudge, it doesn't bleed on the paper, it doesn't transfer through to the other side, and yet it also just is very easy to write with. I am super finicky when it comes to pens. Just ask Barry, he's basically our office manager at work. <laughs> I am constantly ordering new styles of pens because I'm just forever disappointed with the pens that I get. So the fact that this one writes so nicely and doesn't bleed, ah, I love it. I'm so happy with it. I definitely wanna pick up one for the office as well because I keep this one here for when I'm planning videos and all that kind of stuff. But frankly, I feel like a fancy bitch using it and I love the way that it writes. So there you have it completely random favorite to round out all of the other favorites that i talked about and with that i'm going to wrap this video up here thank you so much for taking the time to watch and i will see you in my next one until then just be a decent human being bye for now